Hi everyone, Vache here from Recording Studio 9. Thanks for joining me again. Following up from my last video on Empty Power Drum Kit VST instrument in Traction T5, the free DAW, I demonstrated how we can actually install it, import it, and then create a simple drum arrangement and drag that arrangement into one of our tracks and let's have a listen again what it sounds like. Okay, so that's the empty power drum kit version 2, which is free. If you haven't watched the previous video, feel free to click here and go and watch that and then you can come back and continue. So in this video, as I promised, I'm going to demonstrate how we are going to be able to separate the audio tracks of each of the drum kit part. Because at the moment, as you can hear, we are only getting let me bring that down a bit a stereo audio from the empty power drum kit VST plugin. Okay? But I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to actually separate may most likely let's uh, the kick drum, the snare and uh, most maybe we could do an one other instrument, but that should give you enough example of how to separate it. The first thing we need to do is open up our VST instrument and go into the mixer section. At the mixer section, at the bottom, you can actually see there's out one, out one, out one assigned. Now, MT Power Drum Kit actually has up to eight stereo outputs that you can assign it to. At the moment, it's assigned to out one, but you can assign it two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And one thing you have to remember and uh, make sure that you can remember is each one of these outs is a stereo out, not a mono out. So it's out to a stereo, left and right, because they're all stereo. So to be able to send the kick to another channel, let's send it out. I'm just going to try two. And the snare, let's try three. Okay. So the rest of the drum kit, we're going to hear it from out one. Kick, we're going to hear it from out two. And the snare, we're going to hear it from out three. Now, if I actually start playing it, because at the moment we only have assigned out one into our track, we're not going to hear the drums. Uh, kick and the snare. Okay. Even though, as you can see, with that black sort of flashing spot and the snare and on the kick drum, we cannot hear it because the audio is directed to out two and out three. Okay, so we got that bit right. So now we have the drum sound going to different channels. So now we close it. So how do we direct and assign those out two stereo and out three stereo channels from empty power drum kit into our tracks. In Traction 5, there is an option called Rack Filters. So we're going to use the Rack Filters to assign those outputs to different tracks. So we right click onto Empty Power Track VST plugin. We go all the way down to wrap this plugin in a new Rack plugin. And what this will do is replace our VST at this point here into the rack plugin and then insert that plugin into the rack. It will make more sense once I actually click and demonstrate it. What we are seeing on the screen is now a replaced plugin of our Power Drum Kit. And as you can read now, 
It says empty power drum kit wrapper. On the screen we can actually see a MIDI input coming, which is from our track, these MIDI notes, coming in into our empty power drum kit. Okay, when we click, as you can see, it comes up. And then we have all these outputs. We, we have a MIDI output, because you can send the MIDI back out again, of course. And then these yellow ones, as you can see, are power drum kits, the audio outputs. And there are 16 of them. So that's output 1 left and right, output 2 left and right, output 3 left and right, 4 left and right, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So there's 16 audio outputs. So now, any MIDI coming in into a drum kit, audio outputs are sent to completely different channels, as we have assigned it in our Empty Power Drum Kit VST. Did I confuse you yet? Not to worry. You'll see what I mean. So let's close that. Let's uh, play it again. Again. We haven't assigned output 2 and output 3 to any tracks yet, so we are still hearing output 1 stereo. Okay. The next thing we need to do is drag a copy of our empty power, dr uh, power drum kit wrapper into another track. Just going to drag it, and I'm pressing down the shift key, as you can see, so that we can copy it. You can see how there's a plus sign that comes up onto my arrow, meaning that I'm actually copying and, and not moving it. And then I let it go. So now we have a copy of it. It's, it's, a, it's not a clone, but actually copy. So anything that I change in it will actually affect the whole thing, because that's a copy of it. And if I double click and open it, it's the same one. So that MIDI input is still coming from here. Even though now it's appearing on my track 4, it's actually MIDI input is still coming from this track. Now, the next thing I need to do, we can see at the bottom here, left output comes from and right output comes from. They're coming from empty power kit, one empty power kit. Okay, one and two. When I click here, the next thing I need to do, now assign this to two, and those two. See how two, left and right, three and four. So now, MIDI notes coming in here will be split into two. This will create the sounds of output, uh, you know, audio output one and two. Left and right, output one, left and right. And this one, the same MIDI notes coming, splitting here. We're gonna, we have assigned it into output two, left and right. Let's make it a little bit easier by renaming our output channel so it makes sense, I hope. This one, I'm gonna call this out one left out one right and this one is out two left out two right I'm just going to go ahead it will make uh, much easier to identify um, these outputs from the VST plugin. Okay, so now I have output one left and right, output two left and right, and output three left and right. So when I come down here, as you can see, my first one is out one left and right. But on this track, which is track number four, is our two left and right. Why don't we rename this as our drum kick?
And again, we can just drag and copy another one there. This time, let's assign this to output 3 left and right. And let's rename this as snare. Okay, let's listen to the magic now. Keep your eyes on our meters. And you see how that's the kick now, and that's the snare. And the rest of the drum kit is coming over there. So we can... Let's have a kick. Now we can adjust our snare. So as you can see, now we have three separate channels of the drum kit going out and now we can actually have control. We can control the kick, we can control the snare's volume inside our DAW rather than using the mixer within the power drum kit. We can still do that, but this way we can have more control. Because let's go ahead and I'll demonstrate uh, why is it so good. I'm just going to put... Uh, a plug-in here. Uh, where are we? A reverb onto the snare. Okay. That's the normal snare. So now I can actually have specific reverb on there. You know, maybe a slapback reverb or something nice that I want to enhance the the drum. You know, whether I want to put some more compression on the kick and different compression or EQ on the kick or on the snare or to the rest of the drum kit. Obviously, we can separate every other instrument of the drum kit into multiple tracks and have more control. Maybe even, you know, so we can have different controls and different effects within the song arrangement to give us ver variation. So we can actually put automation into our snare so that it sounds differently throughout the song. Can you see? I was moving the mouse, but you can certainly automate that and have different effects for your arrangement. So, that's how we can actually have multiple outputs from our empty power drum kit VST plugin in Traction T5. It is a little bit complicated, but if you watch it maybe twice, you will actually understand how I've actually achieved it. It will make more sense. And once it actually makes more sense, so much more you can do even within our rack filter, because you can actually have effects right here as well. Different filters, you know, different compressors and EQs within the output before even going on to our tracks. But that's maybe for a later time. If you have any questions regarding our um, Power Drum Kit uh, multiple output, I'll be hanging out uh, on the comment section below, so feel free to comment and ask any questions, and I'll try to answer as much as I can. And if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. That way I know it was helpful for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. That way you get kept up to date with any new video I upload. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making more music. Cheerio.